AMD has finally lifted the lid on RX Vega. Plus, Threadripper has gotten its full debut and release date at SIGGRAPH. Before I get into the intro though, I'm trying out timestamps in the description for when I have multiple topics, so check that out if you want to jump to your story of choice and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Also, stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. Vega is here, and it's... Uh, it's not horrible, I guess. Honestly, it's one of those situations where I wish my predictions would have been wrong. I wish Vega would have just blown everyone away with its great price to performance or just overall power. Unfortunately, the closer we got, and with the release of Vega Frontier, as well as the way AMD was comparing it to Nvidia just a week before its announcement, the more I realized it wasn't going to be what many were hoping for. So what have we got? Well, besides the Nano that we don't know too much about, there are four main RX Vega SKUs, and they're being released on August 14th. First up is the RX Vega 56, which is essentially a stripped down version of the main RX Vega 64. It utilizes 3,584 stream processors and has a rated TDP of 210 watts. AMD hasn't really shared much along the way of performance, but it's looking to be slightly better than a 1070. Unfortunately, the pricing of $399 means it needs to be a good bit better. Next up is the main contender for Vega, the air-cooled RX Vega 64. It comes with the same number of stream processors as the Frontier Edition Vega, giving it 4096 and comes in a warm TDP of 295 watts. It's aiming to be a 1080 competitor and is priced at $499. Regarding performance, we do have an official benchmark from AMD. But considering who it's coming from and the game used, these are more than likely a best case scenario and we'll just have to wait for third party benchmarks to get a perfect idea. Either way, from their benchmark, you can see it's a little better than a stock 1080. Just keep in mind that this is a game AMD has worked very closely with, so it's doubtful that we'll see this performance across the board. The third SKU is the limited edition Vega 64 that has identical performance to Vega 64's reference card but comes with this very sexy shroud. The price isn't too much more at $599. I definitely say I think it looks great, I just wish it came in different colors to match a build personally. Like maybe that black one. Oh well, it's definitely one of the best shroud designs I've ever seen on a GPU. Lastly is the Vega 64 Water Cooled Edition. It contains the same 4096 processors as the reference Air Cooled RX Vega 64, but it's clocked a bit higher and has a pretty good bit higher TDP at 345 watts. Unfortunately, it's more than a bit more expensive at 699 US dollars, though it comes with some extras. Speaking of, when it comes to the Water Cooled and Limited Edition versions, there is some good or bad news depending on how you look at it. At least for now, you can only get them in a bundle. You're also able to get the RX Vega 56 in the bundle for about $100 more. The good news is that these bundles aren't bad for those looking to get a new system based on Ryzen and Vega, especially for gaming. You get Wolfenstein 2 and the new Prey, as well as $200 off a Samsung Ultra Wide FreeSync monitor and $100 off a couple specific Ryzen 7 and motherboard combos. Some people think the reason these combos are required is to keep miners away from the card, but considering they're willing to spend quite a bit more for even less, if Vega is good at mining, I don't think it'll be a huge deterrent. There is at least a chance that HBM won't be great memory for it, similar to GDDR5X. Okay, so what does all this mean? What do I think? Well, unfortunately, it's not exactly impressive in my opinion. At quite a bit higher TDP and even a much larger die size, Vega isn't all that great when compared to the GTX 1080, especially considering the 1080's release date. Had Vega been announced alongside the $600 1080, I honestly think it would be much more competitive, but those who held out for it are probably not very happy right now. It's not all bad though. If you own a free sync monitor or want to get into refresh sync technology, it's definitely a great buy considering G-Sync is still quite a bit more expensive. And if you want to get the exact monitor they're offering in the bundle, games, and or the motherboard and CPU combo, you're saving some money. Unfortunately, the price or performance just isn't one that seems to blow away the competition similarly to Ryzen and Threadripper. Speaking of Threadripper, there is some good news. This time though, I've already gone over the pricing of Threadripper in a previous video, but it's impressive enough to reiterate. 
Their 12 core 1920X comes in at $799 US, with their 16 core Threadripper 1950X priced to sell at $999. We do have their release date, which puts it at August 10th, but before you run to grab your wallet, there's another CPU that squeezed its way into the list, the 1900X, which is actually an 8 core CPU. At first, I was a little dumbfounded and thought AMD pulled an Intel, but there actually is a decent reason to get it, and it's also priced pretty well at $549. For one, it's more than likely the cream of the crop when it comes to the CCX modules the CPU is made up of, because it's able to boost up to 4.2 GHz with XFR. With that said, I'd still be quick to call them out on it if it weren't for one thing. It actually uses all of Threadripper's 64 PCI Express lanes, as well as 4-channel DDR4. So this isn't just a repurposed chip that's purely used to get you on the HEDC platform, but can't actually use any of it. No, this is actually kind of a smart offering for those who honestly couldn't use the cores of the higher priced CPUs, but could use more PCI Express lanes for dual GPUs or the more RAM that you can get. I honestly wish it came with 10 cores, but it's certainly not bad given its price. Finally, we have some benchmarks, though of course this is still coming from AMD, but either way, Look at these things! When comparing the 12 core 799 Threadripper to Intel's 10 core $999 chip, Threadripper handily beats it in all but one metric, at least the ones that are shown. Of course, the difference probably isn't worth the extra $200, and I'd hope Premiere Pro gets better. To top it off, when compared to the same price Threadripper option, in professional workloads, the 1950X stomps on Intel's 10 core CPU. Of course, it does have better single core performance, but for most professionals, it certainly seems Threadripper will be the better buy. Though I will say it'll be best to wait for third party benchmarks to say by how much. But what do you think of today's news? Are you just happy AMD is competing in the GPU market, or do you think they really just didn't deliver in that front? And what do you think about Threadripper? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.